Hey guys, this is Casby with Tape, and today you join me for another episode of Subscriber Designs, as I am home for a few days and thought I'd record a couple of videos, because hey, I like doing this stuff, and I haven't done a Subscriber Designs in quite a while, and we start today with this little cool looking plane, which is called a, um, Vought V173 Flying Pancake, which comes to me from... Pierre, which is, uh, yeah, pretty cool. The uh, gear doesn't uh, retract, but it's kind of a nice little plane. I believe I said I would fly this on a live stream a while ago, and I'm a man of my words, so I uh, saw it in my inbox and was like, oh yeah, let's take a look at this. And it's, yeah, it's a little armed plane. It has some 50 cals. Probably wouldn't do much in fighter jet showdown, but it's a nice looking thing. It flies pretty well. It's not particularly maneuverable, but, um, it is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, anyway, let's fly it around a bit. And the best thing is how it lands and takes off because of these kind of front wheels. Let's take a look at that now, actually, because that is the most fun thing. I've got a few other slightly more doing things kind of uh, vehicles to look at today, but uh, this was kind of cool, so I thought I'd take a look. So, uh, yeah, we'll um, throttle down these engines, maybe keep them going a little bit, keep up some speed. And you just touch down on your front wheels. Uh, like, ooh, I should probably do this on a runway as well, but grass is fine. And then, there we go, we bounce, and then bounce, and then, okay, you gotta go a little, yeah, a little more like that. And then, yeah, we just come to a stop, hit those brakes, hopefully don't hit the ocean. We're gonna hit the ocean, oh god. <laughs> and it turns a little bit, does a sick power slide, and there we go. Ah, it's pretty cool. And then we can take off again, because, you know, it turns around, goes back the other way. Basically, it's like a mail plane. It'll be a good cargo plane. You, you land, you do a sick power slide, throw your cargo out the side, and then just take off and go back the other way. And yeah, it takes off automatically like that, which is really nice. And oh, yeah, does not fly without SES. And uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, of course, a good te uh, the real test of any good plane is can it fly through the bridge. So we're going to do that today. And I actually have two more planes to look at. One which definitely won't get through the bridge, but we'll try anyway. Oh, fuck, Jesus. All right, okay. <laughs> and one that might, but it's not really a plane. So uh, we'll give it a shot. I'm thinking low speed might be a good uh, way to get through the bridge. Um, but we'll we'll get we'll see. All right, so coming in. Ooh, this is gonna be bad. I'm gonna fuck this up really bad. I haven't done this in a while. I haven't been playing KSP because I've been. Oh oh oh! Yes, nailed it. Perfect. Okay, that's about as good as it gets. Occasionally, you can actually get out. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing. I also apologize if I sound weird or forget to cut out any sniffing. I am kind of ill, so, uh... <laughs> well, I'm not ill, I'm just... I've been flying a lot, so I'm all just plain ill, which is... I don't know, it's terrible. Anyway, um, the next plane we're looking at today is a B2 Spirit Armed, which comes to me from, uh, Panda Boy. Sent to me actually in April, but, um, I haven't done subscriber designs a lot this year, so, uh... <laughs> yeah, not getting it until now. But, um, yeah, so this is, of course, a B-2 Spirit, the, uh, stealth plane, the nice, cool-looking one that has no rudder. Oh, God, and also, Jesus, oh, my God, please take off. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have a rudder, and that makes it really annoying. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, but it is a really cool-looking plane. And whenever you see these flying, they just look so unreal. I, like, I, j I can never get my head around it. They just look so alien, kind of. I love B2 Spirits, and this is a really nice recreation. The wings look good, it's got, got a good use of um, these fuselages, and in the cargo bay, if I could figure out how to open it, I don't think it is action grouped. Um, anyway, in the cargo bay, we have ourselves a little nuclear bomb, because uh, why not? So I'm going to go and nuke the bridge for uh, always ruining my planes. Um, the armed version of this, I was flying the unarmed version, um, but the armed version seems to... Oh, okay, yeah, no, it does not fly with the SES. But, um, yeah, anyway, this seems to, uh, induce quite a serious oscillation, which is, uh, yeah, kind of annoying. <laughs> anyway, so let's get the bomb and, uh, nuke the space center, because we can't go to space anymore. You know, we've had budget cuts, we've got to just, they've told us to get rid of this, and we also can't have any nukes anymore, so, yeah, see you later, Cold War. That's it all done in one. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a North Kerbin Dynamics nuke, by the way, if anyone's gonna ask, because, um, Someone will, uh, because people like to know what the mods are. And yeah, yeah, that's North Curve in Dynamics. Gives you lots of nuclear weapons. This is one of the smaller ones. But of course, uh, this is a stealth plane. They wouldn't have even seen us coming. We would have snuck in. Everyone would have been like, oh, what was that? Nothing. It was stealth. And then they'd be dead, because nukes. Um, how fast is it falling? Right, should I speed up or slow down? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it's quite a big nuke. That's quite nice. Um, yeah, try and get that in there. 
the uh, mushroom cloud's a little messed up. Usually it's a slightly cooler mushroom cloud, but maybe the smaller nukes don't do that. And you can see it's all in ruins. Oh god, the humanity. And I have been nuked. Yep, I think I got nuked right there. Um, I don't really know what happened there. Anyway, let's get it back. <laughs> let's just revert to launch and try and fly through the bridge. Yeah, did I get nuked or did the plane just break? I don't really know. <laughs> anyway, alright, let's try and fly through the bridge with our nuclear payload. Hopefully we won't have a broken arrow situation. And this time I'm actually going to try taking off with SES, because um, I guess that's probably the best option. This always just freaks me out when it takes off and puts its brakes off, though. Yeah, see, what the fuck is going on here? You d it, it turns on takeoff. That's quite annoying. Anyway. Alright, let's get it turned around and flown through this bridge. Let's hope that we don't crash or everyone's going to die. Again, that was just a test. We didn't really nuke the, uh, the KSC. We, we wouldn't do that. That wouldn't be something we'd do. I think we've done it before. Oh no, Agonarch did it before, because <laughs> in collaborative warfare. We did have nuclear weapons in the collaborative warfare, but then the series came to a rather ungraceful end before we got to unleash nuclear hellfire. Which is a shame, because that's a big part of the uh, lore of... Um... See, what's it doing? It's just a, anyway, yeah, it's a big part of the lore of, uh, of Kerbal Rising, is the whole nuclear winter that was induced by mostly Agonarch. I mean, if you watch that series and, uh, and really think about it, he's the guy who's probably most likely to do nuclear winter, just, just cause, you know. It's probably profitable for him. <laughs> uh, can't make a loss if there's no planet. Ooh, that's a good idea. I should write business books. The Art of the Deal with Peter Taylor. <laughs> you can't make a loss if there's no planet. That's a good. That's good shit. Maybe that's you know. Maybe that's what company AIs are just doing right now. Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna fuck this up. We're all gonna die. Oh my god. No broken arrow. Hey, the nuke didn't go off. That's good. That is good. All right. So that doesn't go through the bridge. Anyway, yeah. B two spirit. Really cool. Thank you to uh, Panda Boy for uh, sending that to me. That was uh, pretty cool. Anyway, let's move on to the final thing we're going to look at today. So the final thing uh, we're looking at today is the Explorer Dart SSTO Crewless, which comes to me from Gabe. And this is pretty cool. It's a little lifting body SSTO with a nuclear engine for space and uh, some ramjets for not space. So let's get it out of not space into space. I don't know the action group, but we'll figure, out, we'll figure that out later. Um, and yeah, this is an SSTO. It's kind of a bit of a lifting body, really. It doesn't have big wings, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And you don't really want big wings on an SSTO because you've got to carry them. Um, so yeah, we're going to go up pretty steeply because it's really it's quite small and has uh, a couple of ramjets. So we're going to go up really steeply, get some speed, flatten out, try and get as much of our orbit done as we can with the ramjets, and then switch over to nuclear, get into orbit, and then I just want to see how far this thing can go, because it's an interesting design. It's fairly simple, and I think it could actually be a really nice addition to, um, well, addition, I don't know, it would be really useful for like a, for a little space agency if ever I do a, a, a career mode again, I might build something like this. Um, I probably will do a career mode again at some point, but I don't really know. Anyway, you can see how this is just like lapped up here, like obscenely quickly. And we'll probably get us on a pretty good trajectory. I'm gonna pull up a little more, try and... try and get our, uh... our apoapsis <coughs> apoapsis out of the uh, atmosphere. Or maybe I should just flatten out. I don't really know what I'm doing. I might have to do this a couple of times. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> Let's fire up that engine, see if we can solve this at all pull it up a little bit, because I want to raise my apoapsis, or do I want to speed up? I've forgotten how to space. <laughs> anyway, it uh, looks like, yeah, these are shut down now, so I will just shut them down. Um, and see if we can get there on nuclear engines. Uh, I'm not really used to flying these kind of SSTOs. Oh yeah, yeah, that was fine. You just want to get up to about 1300 meters per second, go fairly flat, um, and then use the nuclear engine. Oh, I thought it would be less effective um, in the atmosphere. But I guess we're really high up, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's actually really easy to do. Even an idiot like me can use this. <laughs> and I am i am actually pretty bad with STOs. I just don't use them that much. I haven't done enough space exploration recently, or except in, like, real solar system where you kind of have to use rockets. Um, although you can do SSTOs in RSS. I think someone's done them once, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, um, get Matt Lown on it. That's really his thing. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we are going to get our Apple Apps is quite nice. I'm going to flatten out a little bit now to uh, stop losing energy. And uh, there we go. 70 kilometers out of the atmosphere. I'm going to keep going a little more, though, just so that we um, don't lose our Apple Apps to drag. Uh, I'm going to get up to about 80. And oh my god, this plume looks so nice. 
Like, I'm really used to the old plumes, which have been around for years, but those are some good-looking plumes. Look at that stuff. Yeah. This is also KSP 1.4.4, by the way. Uh, there's been an update while I've been away. I came back to, like, a million downloads on my uh, Steam. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, this is going to take forever. Anyway. All right, so... Oh, I didn't need to burn that high. I want to see how far this can go, though. Um, how fast am I going? Uh, pretty good. This is a very capable SSTO. I bet if you flew it better as well and didn't, <laughs> at the very critical moment like I did, try and decide whether to go up or forwards. <laughs> I probably should have decided that before I took off. I just got up to about 30 kilometers and was like, up or forwards? Up or forwards? <laughs> but yeah, I bet if you weren't, you know, an idiot, you could... Uh, make this uh, even more efficient, but uh, still, pr quite a lot of fuel left. I'm just going to burn and see how far this goes. I'm not going to go and try and go anywhere specific because, um, well, I want to keep this short because I don't have a ton of time, um, but uh, yeah, all right, there we go. And that's Orbit. I'm just going to have some water really quick. Sorry, I am still a little ill. I picked up a cold on my way back, but it's like, it's like the 12th right now, which is Ireland's The Purge, pretty much. Um, which is Belfast, like, there's like a purge in Belfast, like the movie. Like, seriously, like the movie. So I had to go. Um, so I flew back on, uh, flew back from... And, and last weekend I was, I was in London as well. So I flew from Belfast to London on Friday, and then, um... L Bel then London to Belfast on Sunday... And then Belfast to London on Wednesday. So I've been flying a lot, and that really takes it out of me. Um, especially on shitty airlines. Like, obviously you don't do short-haul flights on, like, Emirates. But, you know, easy jets a bit. It just, it's just, yeah. Anyway, I'm complaining about some seriously first-world problems. I am flying in planes too much. I am being lifted up and traveled faster than any human ever imagined they could go too frequently. And I'm not paying any money for it. But, <laughs> oh, it's good time to be a human. It's good time to be me. Anyway, yeah. But that is why I sound like ill and stuff. Because it, I'm just, my ears hurt. My, my face is just, just a mess, you know. I should have really picked, like, a direction as well, because this is just going to sort of deorbit. <laughs> oh, wow, I should have planned this better. Yeah. But like I said, you'll have to forgive me, I'm ill. <laughs> yeah, this was dumb. <laughs> Didn't quick save either, so I can't redo it, so... <laughs> but yeah, like, you can see that I'm going to fly out of the, solar, out of the uh, Kerbin system, because burning upwards isn't a great idea for going anywhere. Um, there's that line in Gravity, where, um, the film Gravity, which I watched on a plane once, actually, which was a bad idea. Anyway, yeah, so there's this line in Gravity where it's, uh, where Sarah Jessica Parker, no. Oh, fuck. The woman, the, the, uh, <laughs> the, I, I've noticed that I almost never remember female actors' names, because I guess I'm implicitly sexist, so I'll be like, so George Clooney and the woman, and I'll be like, oh, I sound like a dick. But anyway, yeah, so... No, I, I'm going to Google it. You know, I'm just going to Google it so I sound slightly less like an asshole. <laughs> yeah, this is a very boring story as well. Um, Sandra Bullock. I knew it was something with a B. Um, and that's why I said Sarah Jessica Parker. Anyway, yeah, so there's this bit in Gravity where um, Sandra Bullock is like, to George Clooney, but how do we, how do we get back and... Uh, or something like that. It's something dumb like that. Um, and and George Clooney is like, oh, it's pretty easy. You just burn towards the ground. It's like, fuck off. Do you burn towards the ground to get home from space? You burn backwards, you dumb. F no wonder you get trapped in space, you dick. Burn towards the ground. Anyway, yeah, that was a really annoying line in Gravity. Um, the other annoying bit was where George Clooney was explaining to Sandra Bullock, who is the medical officer why she's, like, dying of um, CO2, of oxygen deprivation or CO2 poisoning. It's like, I think she knows that. She's a doctor. <laughs> but uh, I guess she just, you know, forgot everything in space because she needed to be, like, helpless for the story. Anyway, yeah, so this isn't going to be quite as efficient as it could have been because I'm very stupid and I'm thinking about gravity. Um, <laughs> oh, what an okay film. Maybe we'll get an encounter with Eve, though. Probably not, because we're in a bad inclination. Yeah. Well, it might happen. You never know. 
Yeah, still though, we got pretty far. Like, look at that. That's not bad, considering how poorly I did this. But yeah, that's a really cool aircraft, and I wish I brought it back, actually, because I'd like to see how it re-enters. You know what, let's do that, you know? I want to see that. Let's just put it in orbit of... Oh, god damn it. Let's put it in orbit of Kerbin. Let's put on infinite fuel so that um, I can actually fly back. Let's see how it returns, because it can go pretty far. We've seen it's a good aircraft. Um, it's worthy of the name Explorer. I think you could definitely explore the inner solar system with this, and probably land on Duna, maybe. Although the wings might not be big enough for that. Um. Oh, damn it. Ah, I'll land somewhere. Fuck it, let's test its landing in the desert ability. <laughs> That's very important on uh, space planes. I believe that was one of the uh, shuttle's requirements, is that it could just land randomly in the desert. That's actually not true. The shuttle had to land on, like, a really specifically built runway that, um, that was, like, within an inch of being actually flat to the Earth's curvature, because, you know, it's hard to actually do that. That's why you roll forward on the, um, K uh, the KSC runway in Kerbal Space Program, is because that runway's flat, but it's not flat to, uh, Kerbin's curvature, so at one end you're actually going downhill very slightly. Um, but with an actual space shuttle, you need it to be super flat so that, you know, you can land. Because the space shuttle basically barely lands. Um, it's, it's just a ridiculous vehicle. <laughs> it's cool, though. I miss the space shuttle. It's badass. I, I saw, um, there's this really great talk by someone about how to land a space shuttle, and then they have the video of people actually flying it in. And it's amazing how calm they sound. I would be freaking out. I'd be like, what's that? What? Oh my god. I hate landing even in aircraft, in normal planes. Now, planes come in at a 3 degree descent rate, but the shuttle comes in at like 20 degrees. And it does flatten out, but still. It's just a mess. It's just... It, it, it's one of those things that's only just possible, and I love how almost impossible it is. It's great. Anyway. <coughs> oh. Oh, getting ill. I'm going to pause just in case this burns up while I'm drinking water. Alright. Let's uh, flip it forward. It's getting kind of hot, but we can burn off that velocity. Bleed off that velocity, even. <laughs> or burn off some crew. Um, yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. We just want to really try and take out that velocity as quickly as possible. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Oh, it does have crew. Why is it called crewless? It has crew. Yeah. They're pretty happy. They've been all over the place. They've been out to space. They teleported back to Kerbin. They've been through a fireball. It's all good stuff. There's a, a new lifting body aircraft. Oh, well, spacecraft coming out, isn't there? What's it called? It's the, um, the, very, the famous one that everyone was making in KSP for a while. It looks cool, though. What's it called? Damn it. Dream Chaser. That's a cool looking spacecraft. I love lifting body vehicles because it's like, well that won't fly, it doesn't have any wings. And it's like, nope, it flies because science. Ah, oh, they're great. This does have wings though, it's actually a, probably a pretty capable aircraft. KSP is very forgiving, <laughs> wing, wing wise. Anyway, yeah, re-enters very well. Seriously, this is a great space and aircraft. I really like it. It's really simple. It's like, how many parts? It's like 36 parts. It's pretty simple. It's the kind of thing you might build, but it's just very well crafted. I really like this. Um, occasionally I'll get some, something in um, subscriber designs that's like, oh, this is just really nicely made. It's just well thought out, not over complicated, you know? It's good stuff. Anyway, we should try and bleed off some more velocity if we're plummeting towards the ground um, and try and land sort of close to sea level. We want as thick atmosphere as possible. I wonder if this could land on Duna. You know what, I might do a whole series with this, just fly it around. And it has a docking port, so it could refuel. Huh. Yeah, I could totally do a whole series, just see how far I can get. Like, have a refueling station at every planet. That'd be cool. And then, yeah, that'd be... Oh, hmm. <laughs> I really want to do that. Yeah, just refuel. And if I refueled it in orbit of Kerbin, it could go, like, anywhere. Damn. Huh. Hey, Gabe, I'm stealing this and I'm doing a whole series. <laughs> that would be cool. I reckon it would work. I need to bleed off more velocity. Seriously, Peter. Yeah, this actually flies pretty well. This is this is disappointing. I was hoping it would just fall like a brick, but no, this is actually pretty good. And it is pretty dream chaser actually. <clears throat> dream chasery, actually, with its kind of very up slanted wings. 
I guess that makes it pretty stable as well. Oh, all right. Can we land on the bumpy grass? I've landed worse things in worse places. Oh, but it has been a while. <laughs> I haven't played KSP enough in the last, like, four weeks. Oh, God, pu pull up. Flat, flat. Oh, my God. Oh, God, everything's fucked. We're good. And perfect landing. Actually, not bad. Yeah, better than those landings on lathe with the uh, SSTO in, in, in um, Road to Colonization. That was terrible. <laughs> anyway, yeah, lands pretty well. Really awesome aircraft and spacecraft. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much to everyone who sent me stuff today, especially this. This is really cool. It works just really well. And, uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be uh, one or two more videos in the next uh, kind of three weeks. <coughs> because... As, as I said, and as you probably know, I'm, I'm still in Belfast, not currently, I'm back for a few days, so I'm recording some stuff, but um, yeah, hopefully there'll be like maybe a video a week, but I guess we'll see, uh, and if not, after, you know, three weeks or so, I'll be back to full, to full schedule, full pace, or whatever, or maybe not quite as much as before, just because I'm getting used to a new job and everything, but there will be videos, basically, so yeah. Anyway, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this, this has been KSP with Tape, I'll see you next time.